Hi. As I record this, it's October already, and we're rapidly approaching both Halloween and the 5th of November, bonfire night in the UK. I wanted to do a little fun project to mark these festivals. So I thought it would be fun to do a slightly spooky animated Guy Fawkes mask. After all, what could be more spooky than the animated head of a terrorist who was hung, drawn and quartered in 1606? This mask was famously used in the film V for Vendetta, of course. A must-watch film, in my opinion, for this time of year. Please remember, remember to like this video and to subscribe. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you on the other end of the video. So the concept here is just to animate a Guy Fawkes mask. Of course, we want some glowy eyes, because glowy eyes are cool. Then, of course, I want it to move, to animate. So I'm going to use pan and tilt system on it to be able to rotate it laterally and longitudinally um, in the direction. So, you know, it can turn round and it can turn its head up and down a little bit. To actually detect where to move and think about that, I'm going to go back to our HCSRO4 and ultrasound sensors. And I'm going to use three of them at 34 degree angle separation so I can detect which one someone is standing the closest to, and we can turn the mask towards that. Also, we can actually see how far away they are. If they're a reasonable distance away, we'll leave our eyes nice and green and safe, but as they get closer, our, the eyes will go pink and then red um, if we get too close as our mask gets angry. For my sponsor slot from PCBY, I want to talk about a problem this time and how uh, people like PCBY can really help with that. The big problem that I've had in this build and this project has been connectors. Um, connectors are often the bane of my life. They don't work, they're intermittent faults, and then tracing them back, which is a real nightmare. There are lots of connectors on this. Remember we've got three HC SRO4s. Each of those has four connections on it and actually they're two ends of a cable. So that's 24 connectors on its own. Then of course we've got our two um, RGB LEDs for the eyes. Well, um, they've got four connectors on them too and uh, two ends, so that's 16 connectors there too. The servos, well, they're not too bad. We've only got two servos, three connectors, one end is hot coated, so I only have to worry about connectors on one end, so that's only another six. Then of course we've got a few resistors on there as a voltage divider and um, a Pico as well. So all in all, even if we leave out the resistors and Picos and just worry about my serious length to fly cables going to uh, the devices and the modules, that's 46 connectors. No wonder some of those from time to time have problems, particularly when I go and do silly things like move breadboard around. How can I get around these problems? Well, really the way to get around this problem is to move everything onto a proper PCB, have it all nicely soldered in place with proper connection systems, so then I have less of an issue, or less places where issues can, can happen. And this is where my sponsor PCB Way comes in, because they can turn around a board for me and print it and have it shipped to me within about a week. And they also add some additional value in that because they will just validate that I haven't been any uh, silly in my board design. Uh, connectors are actually connected okay. I haven't forgot to send them the, um, the drill pattern, which I have done in the past. Um, and they will tell me all of those things and validate before actually producing and sending me the boards. So really my advice is, when these projects start to get a little complicated and you get lots of connectors, think about actually designing your PCB and having it manufactured by PCB Way. They really help. Let's talk about the schematics for this project then and the hardware that we're going to use. And actually it breaks down into three pieces really. The management of the eyes, the rotation of the head or the mask, and the sensor array. So the eyes, well, those are just going to be two RGB LEDs. Um, I happen to have some 10 millimeter common anode um, RGB LEDs lying around, so that's what I've used. I've 
touched on RGB LEDs in other places. Um, in my microprojects course on Udemy, we actually go through and play with RGB LEDs the painting the entire colour of the rainbow. So if you want to know more about them, go have a look at that course. In terms of rotation, well, I did a, a short video on driving servos uh, using PWM from the Pico, and I'll put a link into that short video. And sensors, well, I've done quite a bit on the HC SRO4 recently, and there's a couple of great videos out there on that, so you can go and see uh, more of those. So this is really very easy stuff, just connecting up these uh, three sets of components. So the eyes are going to be two RGB LEDs that I'm going to run in parallel. I'm using 10 millimeter uh, RGB LEDs. The ones I had around are common anode. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I didn't want them to be too bright, so I've actually overdone the resistance and they've got 100 uh, ohm resistors on them, uh, connecting them into the Pico. Now, because they are common anode, I will have to remember this when I'm doing my PWM code for fading them and changing their brightness of the LEDs, because actually a PWM full-on of FFFF is actually going to be um, turning the LED off, whereas zero is going to be full on. So I just need to remember to invert things to how I'd normally think about them in terms of RGB colors. The servos are going to be MG996Rs. I had those lying around and I had a pan and tilt um, framework to work with to connect them off of. So that's fine. So those are what I'm going to connect up. I should really be running these off of six volts and off of a separate power supply. Um, but I found I could get away with running them off of five volts off of the USB power coming into the Pico. So that's what I've done for this demo because it was nice and easy to do. There, there are issues with that. Uh, the, the servos are actually creating quite a lot of noise. Um, which could be starting to affect some of our sensors. So this isn't necessarily the best thing to do. I would say put it on a separate power supply on 6 volts. That would be the better thing to do, but I've cheated. And finally the center array. Well, that's just three HC SRA4s connected up. I'm using voltage dividers once again to actually drop the 5 volts out of these down to 3.3 volts to go into my Pico. Um, I could use logic level converters and I've talked about logic level converters before. Um, you do have to be a little bit careful with those though with the HCSRO4s because logic level converters take time to convert the logic level and that time conversion can actually affect the amount of, um, or the accuracy of what we're measuring on the Pico. So just be careful of that. Actually using voltage dividers doesn't have that problem. So I go voltage dividers. As always, the code for the example can be found on GitHub. Over in Eclipse, we've got our repo and the project. Now I have made this a free RTOS project, uh, which is a, perhaps a little bit more complicated than it needed to be. The reason I did that is to allow the head to have a little bit more realistic motion. So it accelerates and deaccelerates as it moves, rather than just moving to a new position. Um, if you just move to a new position and that you're happy with that sort of jerky motion, motions, then um, we could have done this with just bare metal but I'm using free RTOS to just give it um, a little bit more gentleness within the motion, which means that I've actually got three tasks going on here. I've got my main task, which really is only just setting things up. I've got the head running as a task within free RTOS, and I've got the center array running as a task. So those, those are my tasks that are running. Um, and my main task is really setting that up. So it's gonna set up the eyes, tells the eyes what GPIO pads they're using. So it's the, the head, tells the head what GPIO pads it's using for the, to control the servos, and sets up the range sensors, telling it which GPIO pads we're using for the three range sensors. 
and then really we're going to tell the range sensor because because that's really going to manage the whole thing um rain it you know where the sensor is detecting motion or someone getting close that's what's actually driving behavior so it is that range sensor that is actually going to be uh, telling the head what to do and telling the eyes what to do so we need to tell the range sensors where uh, where the head and eyes are and then we can start up the head and range um, tasks um, that's it in the main program so what else have I got in here that's worth talking about well let's start by having a little chat about the eyes um, they're fairly simple really you know all we're going to do is set them up and set their color and if we see look in the C++ code from this they are really just PWM management so it's just setting up three three PWM channels and setting their levels we of course we're using common anode uh, RGB LEDs so I have to invert the uh, level that I want um, uh, because full um, full on on PWM is off on the LEDs um, and full off is full on on the LEDs so I just uh, need to invert that um, but that's it the, the eyes are a really simple piece of kit on here the HC SRO4 uh, controller is the one that we used previously um, in a previous video, so I'm not even going to talk about that. That's using interrupts to measure the uh, distance uh, uh, signal coming back from our HC SRO4. Go have a look at that video, that will explain all of that in more detail. Our server array then is really actually just a collection of three range sensors. So the constructor here sets up the um, three sensors and then our run loop is really doing all of the clever logic. Reading the three sensors and then it's trying to work out well actually which is the closest, which, who, where is this person closest to our, our device because that's the direction we want to turn in and how close are they, what is the, the minimum uh, value we are reading from those sensors and it uses those to um, set the color of the eyes um, when you get too close when you'll get uh, less than uh, 50 centimeters away then the light eyes are going to go bright red um, if you are coming up to 50 centimeters but less than a meter away they're actually going to be pinkish over a meter it's going to be nice and green and um, then we do a little bit of smoothing logic here to say really have we um, have we had consistent change of direction for three uh, senses in a row if so then we actually are going to trigger the head to rotate um, there's a little bit of uh, logic here as well to say if nothing's happened for 10 seconds then the head should go to sleep and when it goes to sleep basically the eyes go blue for initially and then turn off and the head um, just tips back. So uh, let's have a look at the head I guess. So the head is really just servo management and it's doing um, a little bit of complicated work on that servo in order to um, allow our, our motion to to move so when when we ask the head to move to a position we calculate a sine wave of motion to accelerate and then decelerate as we go through that motion and so there's uh, some uh, sine wave maths going on in there of calculating deltas and portions of deltas and the same is going on in the run loop every time we're moving to a new location we're calculating how um, the portion of that um, motion to actually do at any one time as we accelerate and deaccelerate. I've also got um, a control here that once we get to the required location we actually turn off the servos. That's because my servos seem to hum quite a bit um, in lots of locations and I found that a little bit annoying so I wanted to turn them off. There are risks to turning the servos off because of course they can suddenly drop and uh, there is no power actually holding that position. I'm hoping there is enough friction there to keep it in place otherwise the head will suddenly drop forward. 
Um, most of the time it's actually worked fine for me, so I quite like this turning the head off. And that's all the code is really. So um, let's have a look at a demo. So first the mask is going to not detect on the thing, so it's going to go to sleep. Eyes going blue and head tipping back. And then as I come into range it's going to sense me. And the eyes are going to go pink because I'm within a meter. You can see the acceleration and deacceleration of each motion as they're actually quite smooth. As I move towards it the eyes go pink and then as I go even closer they go red as it goes into full angry mode. Moving back they go pink, then outside a meter range they go green. This was a really nice quick project as it built off of other projects and experiments I shared here. For Halloween I've left this project way too late to start which means I didn't get the migration to a PCB and to alleviate my connector issues. I know I'm not the only one to have connector woes. I've been watching Tim Hunkins uh, YouTube videos, a legend in the maker world, and he talked about the same connector issues. Good company to be in. Any suggestions on connector tips, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Please like the video as it helps others find it. Please subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss the next video. And do take a look at my Patreon page. I really appreciate your support in keeping these videos coming. Remember, Patreons get access to my videos up to a week early and my personal gratitude. Goodbye for now.